What's up guys? Today we have this Breville slow cooker and well it just randomly died. So today we're taking it apart and showing you what's inside. So first of course remove the pot. Yeah, you can cook stuff in there, in here. Um, next, we're gonna take it apart modularly, okay? I've removed the drip kit tray, which takes all the moisture and drops it in there, and then you dump it later. So first I'm gonna remove this rubber seal. This keeps all the pressure inside the machine. And then I'm gonna remove the lid, which is here. And on the lid, it's made of, well, many components. First is this, the pressure release valve. Then there's this, a little strainer for actually to prevent stuff from clogging it up. It goes through here. What resolution am I filming in anyway? Whatever. Uh, most it can do is 1080p. So it won't be too big of a file, but that's not related to the video. Uh, now, I'll need to get into my tool kit, right here. It's to the side, actually. And here is a wrench, because we're removing this, this pressure release valve. Hmm, screw quite loose anyway. All right, here's, well, that part. And there's a, here's the plastic piece that holds the pressure release valve in place. And here is the valve itself, right here. Can withstand pretty high pressures. I'm gonna use the pump as my parts tray. little uh, knob that you can turn to remove the lid. And in here, yes, there are parts. So we're gonna, of course we're gonna take it apart. This being a uh, Captain Morris Productions. Hold on. I'm gonna use a small screwdriver, pry this off. No, it can. Okay, here it is. That's where it clamps on to the lid. Mm, that's it. <laughs> Only one part out of that thing. Now on the lid, it's not done yet. Of course, there are more parts. There's this little gasket that holds the another pressure release valve in place right here. And of course, here we have the emergency pressure release valve when there's too much pressure. So we're gonna remove this with a screwdriver. While holding it on the other side. That's been removed. There's a spring on the screw to keep it in place and release it at the correct pressure. And here's the other end of it. Put that aside. And now, use our wrench again and remove the nut that's holding it in place. Here it is, the complete pressure release valve. And that's pretty much lid disassembled. There's not much left on that lid. So we're gonna put that aside. And now we're gonna start working on the main part of the machine. But I would say we should first remove this. This uh, lid 
hinge. There's no other word for it, it is a hinge. So, get my regular screwdriver, fill it back. It's actually a PH2. Pretty much a universal one because it'll fit on a lot of Phillips head screws except for the really small or really big ones. Sorry, it's not focusing. Oh, there it is. Get the camera to focus because I do not have professional filming equipment. It's just an iPad that's made in 2016, so it's pretty old anyway. Don't judge. I would use a flathead to attempt to pry it off, which doesn't seem to be working this time. Or is it? Turn the machine around. Try it from here. Be careful. Don't don't hurt yourself. Try a smaller one. That should be better. I'm not exactly sure how to remove this. First time I wasn't sure about these disassembling and stuff. Okay, so it is from that side. It's just a bunch of snaps and clips holding them all together. There's this random piece here. Ooh, that broke off. Either by itself or when I was taking it apart, so that could have been a problem. But I can't be sure. It's just a normal switch to detect something on or off. Or screws underneath the panel, but we'll deal with that later, I guess. Now just a couple clips to disconnect. Well, mostly free. Set that aside. And there are two screws there. And to speed up the process, I'm going to take out a drill. Pop the battery in. And I'm good to go. There is some sort of pressure switch. It's not really a pressure switch, it's actually a... Oh, I know what this is. It's uh, an electromagnetic switch where uh, when, when power is applied here, this will push out to press something. Okay. Let me try it out later, but not on video. It's pointless. No, there's something there. 
and remove it, obviously. There's this little metal thing here. I'm not sure what it is. All that aside. And, oh, holding that in is, I'm going to press on the other side. The Q-tip, that's the best I got right now. Is this, a metal rod. So, to continue the disassembly, we're going to have to flip the device over and break out a special tool that not everyone has, but they're like eight bucks for a whole kit. So I'm going to lower the camera stand. Sorry, it's a bit shaky because I am lowering it. There it is. Right here, this hatch. That little screw there is a T6, I believe. Torx. So I got this at Walmart. It's a special tool kit. Or was it? No. It's a T10, really? It is. So uh, ignore what I said. T10 screw. So remove that. And then I'll insert my screwdriver here and turn it, and it pops off and becomes like this. So that side as well. Now there's there's all your terminals and connectors and whatnot, you know, all the stuff that powers the heater inside there. So we won't need the screw anymore. All of it is built head again, so we only need it once. That side. Now we're gonna remove. One, two, those two screws. Hopefully the bottom case will be released. Quite a long screw actually. All right, there we go. Um, I do need to remove a few screws there as well, so I'll do it off camera in a second clip. Just to remove this part, and I'll show you what whatever's in there. Guys, we are here now, and uh, well, here's the main power board. Take a look. And on the back, if you'd like to look at that as well. So yeah, there you go. I should have paused back there. And I'll also remove the power switch right here. Actually, not the power switch, the plug. Um, what else we got in here? I don't know what those are. I could pull them out. Oh, those are the heating elements. Yeah, don't need to pull those out. We have also got these mounts here. That's for the... That's for the uh, bottom case to stand on. And I don't know what these three screws do. They're quite large. Whatever. Let's 
final one, you're not all that good. I got an idea. I'll flip it over and then put pressure on it so I can remove it. Yeah, need a bit of pressure. Let's see what falls out. That's the main heating element that fell out. Looks very old and doesn't look all that good. It's very worn out actually, even though the machine's like what is it, three years old. Also, I'm gonna have to cut these wires because they're in the way. I'm trimming those off. We have some discs. Don't know what they're made of, but they're discs. Those three things. And after I remove these screws, that's the heating element. As I said, this is a complete disassembly and everything's being disassembled. is a piece of metal. What else we got? Okay, that's that. Yep, there's a spring. So I'm going to clean up the workshop a bit. It's quite messy. And I'll get back to you. What's up again? Uh, wait, um, this is a continuing video, not what's up, guys. Uh, anyway, um, there are four screws in here that I'm going to remove. I believe they hold in this entire pot. Actually, they're not four, they're only two screws. Hang on. No, it does not allow you to remove this whole thing. There are some screws down there. Let's see what that does. Anyway, um, no, I know that doesn't exactly come out properly. Let's see if we can get to the electronics.
go at it from. Well, it's because it's round, it's a bit hard to control. So, maybe if I remove this sticker on the outside, it will reveal some screws. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now with that one good. There are screws. And when there are, I remove them. All right, finally. Now there's just a few screws on the back. Then it's, well, disassembled. Remove this set of wires as well. So there you go, that's what's inside. There's like the main circuit board and a processor you see down there. Yeah, right there. wire to remove. Here it is. It's a three pin. As I said, this is a complete tear down of... Yeah. And it is. That's pretty much everything that I can remove. No way, it's not. Now, I would say that's a lot that I removed. Oh, wait. Hang on. Never mind. Don't want to do that. Might get cut. So, uh, that's pretty much it. All of it removed. All components. So, thanks for watching, and I'll, s never mind, it's not, wait a second, we got this, we still have this. Some kind of connector in between. I don't know. We do still have the thing that you would rotate when uh, opening the cooker. I 
as I suspected, this can be removed. It's the handle that you uh, use to open the cooker. And in there, there are three screws. And there are there are another there are there are another three screws. One screw left. I'm going to use my flat head to remove it because I stripped the Phillips head side. Oh, well, whatever. Can't remove that. They missed, what did they use to tighten the screw? Must be something I don't have. So that is a complete disassembly to my abilities. So, thanks for watching. See you next time. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. And hit the subscribe button to see more awesome videos. And I'll see you next time.